Hey guys, I am so excited to be back with another how to make a wedding dress video. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to make a altered version of the Maggie Sotero dress that, um, that I drafted in my last how to make a wedding dress video. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I am starting by drafting, or I'm starting by draping the center front panel. I'm making sure that it's nice and smooth and I'm pinning it there at the uh, princess seam and I'm just smoothing all the way down to the waistline. This dress is going to have a waist seam so we're just going to start with the bodice for now and I'm going to go ahead and get some more fabric and I'm going to start draping the uh, center, the side front piece. So I'm going to pin there at the side seam and I'm going to pin all the way down to the waistline and then I'm going to smooth it into the princess seam like I did the other side and pin the, the two pieces together at the princess seams, making sure that both pieces are nice and smooth. Now I said that quickly because I want to talk about the alterations that we're making to the design, to the, my original design. Instead of having a sweetheart neckline with a deep plunging uh, center front, we are still having the deep plunging center front, but we are going to make it more of a V. And then she wants the uh, part where the strap is going to attach to be a little bit more prominent than it was in the my original design. So we're gonna do that. And then she's also wanting to have a super long train. So we're doing that. And then we're having two side um, gores. Uh, we're gonna have two gores in the side seams. So I think that about some, oh, and then the straps will be um, crossed in the back over the illusion part. So it, it's still gonna button up. The illusion uh, panel is still gonna have buttons on it and everything. And I'm really, really excited to be doing this because um, the design is just absolutely gorgeous. And I actually posted on my Instagram, um, pictures of the finished mock-up so if you guys don't follow me you can go ahead and go and go to instagram and follow me mine is uh, underscore bomb that sews underscore i have the link there in the description box if you're interested uh, i also will be posting some more um wedding dress pictures like inspiration pictures on my instagram for you guys to vote on and let me know what you guys want to see next because i have a couple of sponsor um sponsored wedding dresses to come up and then after that it's free game so I uh, really want to know what you guys want to see because you guys are the ones watching my video and take this time out to go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and comment down below if you can because like I said in all my videos <laughs> when you guys like and you comment and you share my videos it helps YouTube um, promote my videos to more people who are not subscribed to my channel and if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you leave um, to see more videos like this. I'm focusing more on special occasion and uh, wedding dresses and elaborate gowns and princess dresses uh, rather than casual clothing. Um, yep, yeah, because that is my passion and that's what I love to do. So that's what I will do. And I just picked myself with this curved pen. Anyway, so now that I cut down the top of the princess seam, I'm going to go ahead and pinch in a little bit more to make sure that it's fitting the bust area nice and snug. And I went over this in a lot more detail in my how to drape a sweetheart neckline bodice video. I'll link it above um, for you guys to go ahead and check that out. And that's why I really haven't talked um, too much about what I'm doing here because I'm literally just posted a video about doing almost this pretty much the same thing uh, so i'm sure if you guys haven't seen it you can go ahead and go to my channel and check it out or um it may be in the same playlist as this if you're watching it on a playlist so i'm just gonna go ahead and true up my uh, neckline since i've pinched it in a little bit more and then i'm also going to mark out my um my seam lines on both the pieces as well as my side seam and i'm also going to make sure to leave some notches there so that when i put it down on the table flat uh, which will be in my next video because i can't put it in this one it'll be too long um I can line my pieces up. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those notches.
and I actually figured out the mystery of the weird bus curve. I actually, um, it's been me all this time. Huh, who would have known? Uh, it's been me just drawing it weird. So I actually didn't have that problem this time. And I'm really excited about that. Okay, so next I am going to be using a two-way stretch uh, tool. It's like an illusion tool. And I'm going to be starting my illusion panel. So I'm just starting by pinning some of it to my side seam. And then I'm going to stretch it. Now you wanna stretch it as tight as it will be stretched when you're wearing it. You don't want it to have slack because then it's gonna, it's gonna have slack when you wear it. So you wanna stretch it as tight as you're gonna wear it. And then you wanna pin it down I like to mark out where my center back seam and my side seam is and then after I mark that then I like to take it and stretch it just a centimeter more um, past the past the center back and past the side seam just to make sure that it's extra snug because you do not want that to be um, you don't want that to have slack at all you want it to be nice and snug and at this point if you're doing this um, for a person you kind of want to do this on them but since my bride is so close uh, in measurements to my dress form i will be doing it on the dress form and then when we have our fitting i'll be making sure uh, to adjust as needed And in this video, well, in my next video that shows making the mock-up, I'm not going to go into too much detail on how uh, the mock-up is actually put together just because it's really going to be um, repetitive when it comes to watching me actually make the actual gown. So I just wanted to show you guys how I made the pattern. Here I am um, making the pattern for the skirt. So I'm making sure to place the, the muslin high enough to where it's going to hit my waistline and I'm going to pin all the way down my center front and here I'm just reclaiming pins from the top pieces since they're already done and I'm just going to go ahead and put those onto my table. You would think I've been to back I've been back and forth to Joann's maybe three or four times this week and I've yet to pick up a new box of pins so <laughs> shame on me right? And I'm just making sure to mark all of my seam lines. And that's why my dress form is pretty marked up. Because I, I mean, I mark on it. It doesn't, I don't mind it. But I am marking, or I'm pinning all the way down my center front. And then I'm just going to smooth the, the muslin out. into. Um, I'm going to smooth the muslin out to my side seam. And place pins pretty closely spaced to make sure that everything is nice and flat. And while I'm doing this, I want to talk about the change in fabric choices. Initially, I was making this dress out of a Makito fabric, but when I sent the swatches over to my bride, she decided that she wanted to go instead of a with a Makito, she wants to go with a nice satin twill that I found on uh, mood.com. Mood fabrics. I love mood fabrics, by the way, but it's a nice. Um, satin twill so we're going to go with the satin twill for the uh, face we're still going to use the same illusion fabric um for the back and then we're going to underline with a silk organza and then we're going to have a whole bunch of hand beading and beaded trim on this as well so i'm super excited to to work on this one guys and if you guys are interested in what kind of fabrics i would suggest for this kind of gown in my last uh 
video on the Maggie Cetera wedding dress, I actually listed high-end and affordable options for all of the layers of the dress. So go ahead and check that out. I'll link it above here. So now that I have my piece nice and draped and nice and flat, I'm marking out my waistline and my side seam. And then I'm going to go ahead and mark all of my seam lines. I'm also going to um, make sure that I have my dress form at the same height as my bride and then I'm going to measure from my center front down to the floor and I'm going to mark that and then I'm going to measure at my side uh, side front my side seam there down to the floor a little bit longer than I did at the front and I'm going to mark that there at the top just so I can have an idea when I get to the pattern making table um, how long I need to make it now I'm going to start draping at the center back and I realized that I needed to um, place my fabric a little bit higher <laughs> so it can actually make it to the waistline at the side seam. So I did that and then I am kind of doing the same thing as the, the front. So I'm smoothing it all the way to my side seam and notice that I left a little dart shape there because we have to shape around the butt area. So I'm just smoothing and there under the butt, I'm not pulling it really tight there because my bride needs to sit down and stand up. This fabric is not stretchy at all. Um, so I'm leaving a little bit of ease there under the butt to make sure that she can move around and that she's not uh, restricted in any kind of way. We want her to look like she's, you know, in there pretty good, but we still want her to be comfortable. So I'm trimming down the fabric there at the side seam and I'm going to start pinching in that dart, making sure that it's lined up with my princess seam. the writing on the wall my three-year-old is obsessed with H's and I keep telling my husband we need to repaint the house but you know that comes in whenever it comes I guess maybe maybe I'll repaint the house well maybe he'll repaint the house when he makes me my sewing table too so we're waiting on that y'all <laughs> I'm trimming down the extra there at the top and I'm just making sure everything is nice and smooth so I can start marking my seam lines now uh, on my initial drawing, we had, oh, well, I had the train piece starting quite a bit under the butt, but she actually suggested that we start it um, right there, kind of like in the middle of where the butt, the fullest part of the curve is. And I'm going to just start marking um, all of my seam lines. So I'm going to mark my waistline. I'm gonna mark the side seam, make sure to mark the top of the waistline. You don't wanna get that confused. You wanna mark it the same way you marked the bodice. Um, so I'm marking that and I'm gonna mark the side seam and I'm going to start uh, marking both sides of the dart because it's actually not gonna be a dart, it's gonna be a princess seam. And I'm just gonna carry that down to where the princess seam needs to be. And then I'm also going to start uh, working on the curve or the the kind of v part of the back and she wants hers um pretty high up uh, compared to what i initially designed 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to connect that line there to the side seam with a pretty kind of steep diagonal um, line. And I'm actually glad that we went with this design. I think it is so pretty. So uh, in doing that and leaving that ease up underneath the butt there, I'm actually going to pinch in just a small dart just to shape that bit a little bit because the rest of it underneath there is actually going to be trained. So it, it won't be fitted up against the body. And I'm just gonna go ahead and draw the rest of the side, the princess seam. And then I'm going to measure that line because I need to get the dimensions that my train piece needs to be. So I know that it's 29 centimeters on this dress form. And then I am going to measure how long I need my train to be. And then I'm going to take the measurement that we took earlier from the side seam and that'll be that. So I ended up having, I think 75, uh, 75 inches for the train, super long guys and is gorgeous. Um, we're doing a actual um, one of those pedaled kind of skirts. So I'm super excited about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, 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 no. I have scissors in my hand. No, no, no. As always, thank you guys for watching my video. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my channel now, and I'll see you in my next one.